In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today is a special memorial. Today we're remembering and asking for the assistance of St. Catherine of Siena. She uh, was a young lady, uh, died at the age of 33 in, I believe, the year 1380. Uh, a great, huge supporter of the church. She was a mystic and a doctor of the church. We'll talk about her a little bit later on, but we ask St. Catherine to guide us in faith, to show us God's way, and to be strong in going wherever God sends us. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who set St. Catherine of Siena on fire with divine love in her contemplation of the Lord's passion and in her service of your church. Grant through her intercession that your people, participating in the mystery of Christ, may ever exult in the revelation of his glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, this is the message that we have heard from Jesus Christ and proclaim to you. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we continue to walk in darkness, we lie and do not act in truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of his son Jesus cleanses us from all sin. If we say we are without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we acknowledge our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from every wrongdoing. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, bless the Lord, my soul. Oh, bless, bless the, the Lord, Lord, my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Oh, bless, bless the, the Lord, Lord, my soul. He pardons all our iniquities. He heals all our ills. He redeems our life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. O oh, bless, oh, bless the, the Lord, Lord, my soul. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. O oh, bless, oh, bless the, the Lord, Lord, my soul. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. O oh, oh, bless, bless the, the Lord, Lord, my soul. soul. But the kindness of the Lord is from eternity to eternity toward those who fear him, and his justice toward his children's children among those who keep his covenant. Bless oh, the bless Lord, Lord for my soul. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. alleluia.
The Lord be with you. With your a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus responded, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who, are lab who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord describes for us the kingdom of heaven and living in the kingdom here on earth as well. To follow him doesn't mean to lay down and take it easy. We have a burden, we have a yoke, and we must follow it. But we can do it, and God will help us to. God will not overburden us. God will not give us more than we can handle with his help. And today is a very special day because it is the uh, memorial of St. Catherine of Siena, a 14th century uh, saint, uh, doctor of the church. Died at the age of 33, I believe. Uh, very, very active. I mean, she was God's own child from a very early age. Uh, she longed for him when she was four, or five, six years old. It's said that um, around five and six, uh, when she would go up and down a flight of stairs, she would stop at every stair to say a Hail Mary. So I guess it took a little while, but it was worth it. And what joy she brought to God and what joy God brought to her. And she eventually became a, a, a third member of uh, the Dominicans. And um, um, meaning that she continued to live in the world. But she cared for the poor and the sick. She lived in her father's uh, workhouse. And uh, she cared for the poor and those in need, and she cared for the needs of the church very, very deeply. And she was a mystic. God spoke to her and showed her many things. And she wrote a great deal on them, and you can find her writings. And I encourage you uh, to uh, read some of the conversations she has had with the Lord, very, very much so. And uh, she lived at a very difficult time. Uh, she had greatly encouraged Pope Gregory the sixth, I believe it was. Um, pope Gregory uh, had for many, many, many years as Pope lived not in Rome, but in Avignon in France. Uh, and um, she encouraged him to move back to Rome, to bring the papacy back into Rome. That, that was the place for the papacy. And he did eventually move. Uh, of course, the French were against it, and many, many people wanted to keep him there where they could try to control him. But he did eventually return to Rome. Um, and uh, that was a great thing. But this was also at a time when the great church schism was coming up. And um, when the Pope had been, when the next Pope uh, had been elected rightfully in a normal way, um, other cardinals and others disagreed with the vote, and so they re-voted some of them, and they voted their own pope, what we call an anti-pope. Uh, and uh, he uh, claimed to be the pope opposite the rightfully elected pope. And then a third one popped up, and we had at one time, during those days, three supposed popes. But eventually, after great difficulty and pain and turmoil in the church and in the world. The others eventually needed to step down and the, the Pope who was originally uh, elected 
uh, rightfully, and the, the true uh, descendant of St. Peter, the true unbroken line of popes, continued to that pope and thereafter to our own St. Francis. So, uh, say, I'm sorry, Pope Francis. So, um, um, the, uh, the line of papacy is unbroken, going back to Peter, and we rejoice in that. And she greatly supported um, the, our, the proper Pope. And she could see many devils, many demons, uh, going all around Rome, trying to turn people against the Pope, trying to get them to murder him. And she prayed nonstop that our Lord would protect the Pope, and he did. And he quieted down those demons and lifted her up. And though she didn't live to see the end of it, uh, she was very much a factor in it. I'm sure she was very much a factor in restoring the papacy to its proper foundation uh, even after she had passed when she walked with our Lord. We are grateful that she stood by, even at her young age, always faithful to God. It said that for 10 years of her life, she ate nothing but the Holy Eucharist. 10 years, she remained alive only on Christ. Her love of him, her love of the Holy Eucharist was unbounded as a gift from God to her. It said that Jesus took her heart and put his heart in her. She lived for Jesus and she worked for Jesus. She died for Jesus in the normal way, but a martyr of the Spirit. We ask St. Catherine to pray for us, to help us become dedicated, to help us to support our church, which is the body of Christ. Christ as his head, being led by the Holy Spirit all these years. We trust that the, that the church is not a human institution, it's not. The church is an institution made for humans and filled with humans, but is not an institution of humans. It is a divine institution, an institution of God. We need to trust it. People make mistakes, God does not. And what we are taught in the church is God's truth from the Bible and down through the years because God did not silence himself when, at the end of the Bible. He speaks to us all the time, we know that. He leads us and guides us. But what he says is true now is always true in holiness and in humanity and in divinity. And he is always calling us to him as Jesus has paid for our sins. And we need to accept the forgiveness that he has paid for with his blood, with his life. We accept it, we, we request it, we ask God to come to us and to forgive us. We do need to ask because God will not force it on him, force it on us. He will not force anything on us. But if we ask for him, then he says, yes. We try to break ourselves from sin with the help of God, who does help us to break our sins and to guide us. Let us support God in the world, as the world has a tendency not to do. They call it old-fashioned. They call it myth. They say that our reality has changed, and it has not. What was true back then in godliness and holiness and humanity is true now. We encourage our friends and our family to live for God, to follow God's truth. We ask God to help us to live for him, and to follow his truth in our lives. Jesus, live in me. Live in my friends and family, and let me see you in my friends and my family, so I can more easily care for you and show my love for you. 
and I show my care and love for them and for the people around the world. We ask St. Catherine to pray for us to go to her spouse, Jesus, and ask her to ask him to lift us up, to encourage us, to give us his heart and mind and the strength of spirit now and always. The Lord grants favors to those whom he loves, so we make these prayers known with hope. For all who follow Christ, that their faith in the resurrection of Jesus may deepen, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who renewed their baptismal promises at Easter, that any lingering doubts may soon be dispersed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For missionaries and all who spread the good news about Jesus, that the joy of Easter may fill them with fresh zeal, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the Jewish people, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that they may arrive at the fullness of redemption, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For people who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, that they may experience divine healing and new strength, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have died recently, especially John Bistro, that God's light may shine on him perpetually, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We do pray for the Jewish people. They are not other people. They are not another religion. They are our older brothers and sisters in the faith. The same God, the same Abraham that we claim through our faith. The same God that we love and adore. So we do continue to pray for the Jews, the Jewish people, to lift them up, to keep them close to God, so we may share kingdom of heaven with all who love God throughout the world and throughout the ages. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who are sick, especially those who have been struck with uh, the coronavirus, virus COVID-19. We ask, Lord, that you grant healing. You are the source of all healing. Please, as a gift, we ask you to grant us healing here in this parish here in this state, here in this world, across the world, grant your healing to all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray. We pr Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you. We also pray for Jean Marie Roncalo and Michael Villanueva, for whom this Mass is offered in a special way. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all the people who are supporting us during this difficult time, that God may pour his blessings upon them, lift them up, give them peace, grace, and safety in life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all the holy souls in purgatory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. O God, our salvation, your glory shines throughout the world to bring joy to your people. Hear our prayers and grant us your all-powerful grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed God, God of forever. Forever. Let the mystery 
this water and wine that are going to show the divinity of Christ to humble himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed is God, God forever. forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, for my iniquity and cleanse me of my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the Holy Church. Accept, O Lord, the saving sacrifice we offer in commemoration of St. Catherine, so that, instructed by her teaching, we may give ever more fervent thanks to you, the one true God. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us as and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he sent the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you with thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one Spirit in Christ. May he make an ever of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Elizabeth, uh, Saint, I'm sorry, with Saint Catherine of Siena, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. Yes, even Saint Elizabeth. <laughs> May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for, for the, the kingdom, kingdom and power and the glory of yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sin of the world, have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. For this meaning of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free me by this, your most holy body, and blood from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments, and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep you safe for eternal life.
May the blood of Christ keep you safe for eternal life. Now please join with me in making an act of spiritual communion that our Lord Jesus will commune with you in the spirit of your soul. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. As Pastor lifts his food, O oh Lord, may we possess in purity of heart for what has been given to us in time may be our healing for eternity. Let us pray. May the heavenly table at which we have been fed, O Lord, confer eternal life upon us, as even in this world it nourished the life of St. Catherine. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Protect yourselves and one another. Care for one another. And love God and have faith in him every minute of the day. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God.